Hi guys, yet again, you're back here with Barry, and anybody that's been with us for any length of time already knows I've uploaded YouTubes from Vernon Coleman. Actually, Dr. Vernon Coleman, he was a general practitioner. Uh, he's since become a leading author with over a hundred books, and he's an avid spokesman uh, against big pharma and control of all sorts. And uh, he's also, like many of us YouTubers, uh, trying to get truth out, has gotten somewhat frustrated about having videos pulled. But uh, anybody that's been with us for any length of time at all knows I've used a couple of his videos. And about two weeks ago, more or less, I brought up, well, some crazy rules that the schools in Canada, in my, in my home country, in Canada, uh, that they're trying to put through some of the new rules. Now, it's it, it's obvious they're trying to change humanity in its form. And regardless of everyone's personal opinion on that subject, you can't deny the fact they're trying to change humanity and break us off and break away our need to bond with people. Anyway, um, Dr. Coleman also found this in, in the UK where he's from, and it's if it just doesn't, I think this is some of the hardest material, whether it's the virus or the or, or the riots. Or, I think they all pale in comparison to when I see this kind of stuff. And the only weapon we have is ourselves, and we just don't seem to be given a damn about it, other than complaining. Anyway, watch. It's, it's amazing. I wasn't going to do any more videos for YouTube. They've now banned three of my videos without any explanation that I'm aware of. The third one they banned dealt purely with the question of freedom of speech, a concept which whoever runs the world these days obviously decided was too daring to allow. But things are getting out of hand and there are some things which have to be shared with as many people as possible. And so, although I suspect they won't last long here. I'll put a few more videos on YouTube, but I'll also make them available elsewhere and the transcripts will be on my website. A couple of days ago I saw several images which will haunt me for years. One photo showed school children in a playground, each child confined within a chalk square drawn on the ground. The children were not allowed to play with one another, they weren't allowed to touch one another, they had to play games by themselves, several feet apart from anyone else. Try playing tag by yourself. The quickest game in the history of playground sport. No football, no games that require contact or getting closer than a few feet away. No racing around, screeching for no apparent reason other than the fact that you've got joy in your heart and energy to waste. You just sit in your soulless little chalk square. Another photo I saw showed children in a classroom sitting yards apart from one another, each child wearing a mask and a plastic visor. This is utter, utter madness. It is also wicked cruelty. Back in the 1970s, I wrote the first popular book on how stress can affect the human mind and body. I would never have imagined that anyone could treat children in such a cold-blooded and damaging way. In the UK, it's now being alleged that if a child falls or has any sort of accident, then they must not be helped by other children or by teachers. The child who falls and grazes a knee will have to attend to it themselves. The child who accidentally wets themselves will have to deal with it alone. No hugs, no caring. Enough. The lunacy has gone far enough. Who in the name of all things holy thinks up these barbaric madnesses. We would be better off keeping schools permanently closed. Has anyone in authority any idea of the permanent damage this will do to these poor children? Children will be scarred for life by what's already happened to them. We'll be breeding a new, raid of, a new race of weirdos, loners and psychopaths. Teachers are educated people. They should care about the science. A study by paediatricians couldn't find one case of a child passing on the coronavirus. Not one. One boy who did have the disease failed to give it to 170 people who were classified as contacts. 
To be honest, my feeling is that if teachers want to protect children from dangers, they do better to insist that all children wear crash helmets in the classroom in case meteors fall on their heads. In reality, I think teachers should insist on opening up schools so that children can be taught again. And please, let's forget the daft rules. No stupid chalk squares, no plastic visors. Look at the science. Look at the figures we have. Look at the real evidence. Not the hyperbole and the terrifying myth-making nonsenses poured out by power-hungry politicians and headline-hunting journalists. If we don't stop this, ju this nonsense now, in a year or two's time we'll find ourselves dealing with a generation of mortally wounded young people, unable to mix, unable to talk or relate to others, bewildered, lonely, confused, and in a quiet despair which they don't understand. And I fear that quite a number of them will, be turned out, will turn out to be so disturbed that they become antisocial and even violent. We should either open schools properly or we should keep them closed. Those are the two choices. Thank you for watching An Old Man in a Chair. And thank you for all your support. This video hasn't been monetized. I've not authorized any advertising or sponsorship. You can find more truths about the coronavirus and a transcript of this video and other health matters too on my website www.vernoncolman.com which is also entirely free of advertising and sponsorship. Thank you again, but let's do something about this. I don't know. How, how do you follow that with words? I, I don't know. A child falls and skins his knee or gets seriously hurt and nobody's allowed to touch him to help him. I say, people, there's, there's no more to be said here. Um, I mean, my God, there's no power in one or a handful. You know, and um, if this is what humanity is going to let happen to them, if this is what they're willing to put up with for a primordial fear that they just can't get in their heads is being staged to begin with for the to the greater part, and um, they bow into it. If this is what they're going to let humanity become maybe that's what it's supposed to be i don't know at this point nothing seems to make sense i'm just glad i'm up in the bleachers man from all the videos i'm seeing from our subscribers and good folks sending us stuff in and we appreciate it but you know it's uh it's funny how fast people are rapidly forgetting about the covid and they're wearing their mask in panic but that's not what's on their mind now it's the violence they're just so confused and they're coming at us from all angles and all because people will not take the time to invest in their own mind and their own knowledge. Because once you know, there's no going back. None of it scares you when you're aware of what's going on. I'm not saying it makes things better, but it does in your own mind for yourself. And you could make much more positive decisions and do the one thing that all those people bastards from the top down don't want you to do. They want you to live in fear. If you could learn to live without fear, regardless, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. The only ones that can stop it is ourselves. That's the, the lunacy of this whole thing. Anyway, old Barry and DR, we appreciate you trying to help get this out, but it's... I mean, it is a world of five senses, and uh, nothing happens until something moves. That's a physical move. Till next time.